One more time. One more time. So people are very interested, obviously, in training. They have tons of training questions. They will know some of the things that we have to do. We all know how to do it. Yeah. So I know you told me you did your own programming for a while, um, like without a like personal coach. And how was your success with that? They will know some of the things that you have to do. You have to do it for a while. ولا أه نعم أو يعني هل جاب نتيجة كويسة ولا إيه؟ وأنا لحد ما دخلت كلية. So basically he used to face the challenge of uh, programming for himself because uh, during his juniors period uh, he used to have a lot of uh, exams and a lot of studies that he has he had to attend. So he had to skip a lot of training sessions and a lot of competitions with the national team. So Uh, basically, uh, this would lead to him uh, just programming uh, for himself. He would uh, use any knowledge uh, that he would gain from the coaches and uh, from his studies in the academy, and he would uh, just translate it into programs, self-programming. Um, when he was younger, how did his training change to 20 years older? Like, how did okay. it develop? Uh, yeah. Basically, it's not as easy as everyone thinks. Hmm. Uh, like he's saying that sometimes uh, when you're heavy, like the heavier you get, it's hard to to even approach the numbers that you used to do when you were lighter. Mm -hmm. So it's not just because you got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's not like it's not like you got heavier, mm -hmm. so you're gonna automatically snatch heavier. No, uh, your muscles need to adapt. Uh, your whole life changes, like uh, your mentality changes, mm -hmm. because you were something and now you're totally different. So it takes yeah. a lot of adaptation, and you get fatigued easier. All right. The heavier you are, the easier you fatigue. One question: Will you ever compete in 85? Uh, uh, في مية؟ أنا مش سيء يعني سبعة وسبعين غير لما كسرت من العالم إن شاء الله. ولو كسرت هتخش الثمانين؟ no he's he's planning to stay on the seventy seven and he won't he won't stop until he breaks records. okay. هاخد بقى وقت براحته. so basically this year and then. yeah. بيلعب السنة دي. أمين. But he's saying is like uh, you will at this year. So uh, if if we talk in all seriousness, um, he's not in a hurry. And uh, basically, it's it's a very uh, very complicated uh, subject to break in records. Uh, it depends uh, on conditions, on uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, he has only one sponsor company, mm -hmm. which is helping. Um, and he's saying that that could be enough to. To achieve something huge, but uh, it might not be enough to achieve something historic. Okay, this may be good. Another topic is sponsor deal, like how the will support and funding in Egypt works. Which okay. We probably touched that before. I want to sponsor Basically, he's saying that his deal with uh, his sponsor, the company, is that uh, whenever he's not with the national team. They help with uh, nutrition, vitamins, mm -hmm. and uh, some finance. Uh, when he's with the national team, he gets finance uh, exactly 3,000 uh, Egyptian pounds, which is the equivalent of uh, a little less than a thousand dollars, much less than a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Correction, it's actually around $340 at the moment. Um, and uh, whenever he needs vitamins or um, special kind of nutrition, they provide that, but that's it. That's it? Not more than that. Okay. Should I go ahead with the government? Should I ask yeah. about the government? Uh, it depends on, um, on what are we competing for. Mm -hmm. If we're competing for an Arab, uh, an Arab uh, competition, like uh, uh, the Mediterranean or Arab competitions, uh, basically it's very minimal, mm -hmm. the support from the government. If we're competing for the world, it's obviously bigger. If we're competing for the Olympics, uh, you see the support that we have right now. Yeah. We're talking about arenas, hotels, uh, nutrition, 
because uh, the more they believe that their athletes are capable of providing a medal or getting results and winning uh, winning medals, the more they support them. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, uh, we have the best support in Egypt's history. Back to training, or oh, maybe we should touch the tax subject with his medals now? Sure, why not? Uh, he basically got three medals out of Houston. Uh, only one of them, which was the total. Hmm. Uh, Of Kazakhstan. Ah, of Kazakhstan. Then, Oh, okay. He's, he's talking about Kazakhstan. The ah, new one here. Uh, in Kazakhstan, he had uh, three to three medals in total. Uh, the total medal, which was silver, was the only medal that didn't get taxed. Uh, the silver and the bronze, the other two medals, were taxed by 25 percent. 25 percent tax. And uh, this was very discouraging. He yeah. uh, he didn't like it at all because you can't negotiate something that was won for the country, you know, and that you should encourage the athlete to to, to continue and uh, to uh, not not to not to drop down in motivation, mm -hmm. especially considering that uh, Mohammed Hassan uh, had one medal and uh, he didn't get taxed on. Then back to training, how far in advance is your training program like planned? Uh, how far in advance? Like how, like how is it a monthly basis? Oh, okay, I got it. Really? Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, planned for seven months. They know the program seven months ahead. But we're talking about the Olympics. Hmm. So okay. uh, the coach uh, meets up with the team, uh, takes them through the whole program, For the next seven months, they get a copy of the program, uh, but that's not where they stop. Uh, they uh, they plan each session, each day, each week, and uh, they have to do a lot of preparation because sometimes they get uh, days off, mm -hmm. and when they get days off, they need to know what's going to happen next week because if next week is going to be heavy training with the national team. I'm not supposed to uh, go through heavy training this week just because I have days off. Yeah. So it's all planned very carefully and uh, it's all thought of and uh, they have the exact percentages, the exact uh, uh, amounts of training, the amounts of weights, everything. What happens in, in the case he has a bad day and weights are feeling heavy? What wiggle room is there in modifi modifying the program? Okay. Uh, what he's saying basically um, if it's a bad day uh, that's not an issue at all for them neither for the coaches because they're very flexible when it comes to that because mm -hmm. we're talking about huge huge stakes they can't take a risk yeah. you know they have to they have to stay healthy they have to stay safe uh, and you can always make it up like on another session mm -hmm. like he's saying that um, training is not uh, uh, it's not a rule book okay it's a program to make you better mm -hmm. so uh, if today is not good um, I could give it like I could give it an extra effort but I need to stay on the safe side if tomorrow we have break or like uh, uh, a sauna session or a massage session Yeah, I could I could risk it today because tomorrow I'll be fine. But if uh, tomorrow is an even heavier day, no, I need to tone it down today. If I can't snatch whatever number today, fine, I'll snatch it another day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's go to London. Let's go to London. I can speak on. What happened in your London preparation? In your preparation for Olympic Games? In the in the house of the. So uh, basically what happened was um, uh, that was the time of the uh, January Revolution when the uh, old President Mubarak was uh, ousted Okay, and uh, all the athletes were relieved, everyone was training on their own so uh, he had to purchase vitamins on his own. He purchased um, this specific vitamin that had something um, Banned. It had banned substance it in it. Uh, not contaminated, but it had. It was. Oh, okay. It had something banned in it because mm -hmm. usually uh, uh, each vitamin has its own, uh, you know, like uh, 
contents, and one of those contents were banned. Uh -huh. So he uh, he tested positive uh, for the banned substance, and he was uh, disqualified basically for two years. Was it in competition test or out of competition? It was uh, nationals. And, uh, it was uh, uh, it was after nationals by one month, so it basically not during competition. It was a surprise test. Surprise test before uh, 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 prior to the Olympics uh, by four months. Yeah, so yeah, who stayed at home? You stayed at home? Liao Aad fil bait went to Aad fil bait. It taught him to be more careful. Uh, this disqualification taught him how to always check the contents and uh, um, with the help of his brother who was uh, uh, actually he's, uh, he's in, in, in pharmaceuticals. Okay. okay, so basically he helps him with all the contents and he always makes sure that they're not banned. Like he doesn't purchase any more vitamins on his own. He always uh, consults before purchasing anything and uh, just to stay clean and uh, to avoid any problems so he doesn't uh, face the same situation. Yeah. Does he know, does he remember what it was, what substance? Uh, the left ticket uh, can uh, not be able. At the time, he, he, uh, because of the shock, he didn't pay much attention and, like, to what it was and he just uh, let his brother uh, take care of the case and the investigations, but it was uh, without a doubt like a hormone or some testosterone of some type. Ah, oh, okay. Then on to Kazakhstan. Uh, so we could like check the difference between Kazakhstan and Houston. It's a good idea, right? Yeah. I think now after the report, Kazakhstan. That was the turning point for him. Uh, he was trying to uh, because that's when he uh, when he graduated. So he basically free. He he was free, totally free for training and preparations. So uh, he um, he started uh, a training program and a supplementation program, but this time he was careful. His brother was taking care of the supplements and everything pharmaceutical. Um, and also uh, he started uh, releasing videos, and you obviously are aware. Uh, yeah, exactly. That was the start for him. Actually, he got his uh, professional club deal like the team he joined in uh, in his hometown Fayoum um, through the videos they actually saw his videos so they uh, they uh, made him join and uh, that's when he started uh, preparing for Kazakhstan and uh, from the national team side uh, their position was like uh, how can someone uh, uh, like put up all of these numbers without a professional coach and without professional supervision hmm. uh, basically he was coaching himself so and everyone knew that so they were very surprised so that resulted in four random tests in order for him to rejoin the national team obviously he passed right he passed all four yeah so that surprised a bunch of people in the federation exactly <laughs> so that was kazakhstan and what changed in preparation in comparison to to houston what he's saying is that uh, Kazakhstan, uh, in comparison to Houston, was uh, the challenge of proving himself and proving his worth and proving his level to the world. Basically, not only the world, uh, first of all, he had to prove himself to all of Egypt mm -hmm. uh, with all the doubt involved and all the uh, little support that he got. Uh, basically, uh, Kazakhstan for him was London. Because he didn't get a chance to go to London, and uh, Kazakhstan for him was like London exactly. Uh, in training, uh, his coach at the time uh, used to uh, remind him that uh, the 69 kilos category is very hard, it's not easy, so they put a poster of all the 69 players behind him. Like when he's always, like when he's training, mm -hmm. he'd always have the picture behind him to remind him that these are the people that you're gonna face. Yeah, so uh, it was it was very hard, but it was uh, it was the challenge that he couldn't he couldn't not face. It was his turning point. It was the challenge that that was it. That's exactly when he became Muhammad Ahab. Kalimna ba'an Houston al-far'ibin bin Dauda.
basically the difference between Houston and Kazakhstan was the uh, the financial backing mm -hmm. and the support from the government um, as much as it was minimal it was very different from Kazakhstan because this time the government and the ministers and everyone responsible um, actually realized that uh, Mohammed can achieve something and something big not small yeah. so they decided that uh, this is the the right time to actually start paying more attention and backing up financially and um, whatever support is needed uh, because uh, Houston would eventually lead uh, to uh, to an Olympic medal if if they backed him properly and he he performed well in uh, Houston he would probably most probably uh, perform well in uh, in Rio